All right, today I want to talk about the importance of being barefoot and the importance of taking off your shoes. And what I want to talk about is probably a podiatrist's worst nightmare because if you ask me, podiatrists should not exist. Podiatrists prescribe you with more and more and more and more support for your feet. But your feet need the opposite. If you want healthy, strong feet and ankles and knees and hips and a back and neck, it all starts with your feet. It all starts with strengthening all those muscles, ligaments, tendons, bones, connective tissue in your feet. And by adding more support, more cushion, what you do is you make your feet end up being lazier and lazier and lazier. And all these sens sensory, um, all these senses and all these uh, muscles in your feet do not get the, the uh, exposure they need from the ground that indicates when it needs to adapt to its environment. When you put cushioning under your feet, when you put uh, inserts into your, into your shoes, what you're doing is you're creating a barrier between the sensory organ of the base of your foot to the ground. And so it becomes lazy. It no longer has that connection to know how to respond. All it feels is the soft pillowy cushion of the shoe. So what happens is you end up ha having all these issues that go up the body because the feet are weak and you keep, if you keep rolling your ankles, for example, it's because you're, you're not getting the sensory input from the ground to tell you how to adjust how the foot and ankle should be adjusting to the surface below it. And you see it with if you've ever been a runner. People with knee injuries from running is because through wearing cushioned shoes, you end up running with a lazy running stride and you end up heel striking. If you look at the pattern in walking, it's a heel strike and you roll through the foot and onto the ball of your foot and then push off for the next. And then in jogging, for example, you shouldn't be heel striking at all. You should be landing on the flat or on the ball of your foot and then pushing through the toes. And when you're sprinting, it's all through the toes and the ball of the foot. So when we, when we try and jog or run and heel strike, which is what we should be doing when we're only walking, we end up causing all this force coming through the knee, which obviously causes knee injuries in runners and why people get so many injuries running because basically because they've given themselves excess cushion on the foot so you no longer adapt to the ground below you, but you just you run the same regardless of the environment. Which, has no, which makes no sense because as the environment changes, so should your foot and ankle and your knee and your hips and your whole body should be adapting as the environment changes. You know, if the ground is soft, you can run easily and more without as much caution. But when the ground changes and there's rocks, you, you, you notice yourself having to ad adapt and adjust to the ground below you. And shoes take away from from you being able to do this, from you, able, from you being able to adjust to your environment. And I think it's also a big thing to note that it's connecting you back to the earth. You're earthing yourself. You are nature. We are nature. And when you wear shoes, you're blocking yourself from nature. And when you live in cities, you see it everywhere. We are creating this bubble around nature you know you have concrete you have concrete footpaths and you have the road 
and you have houses and there's very little area where there is the ground, the actual natural ground for you to step on. Not to mention that we're wearing shoes that prevent us from connecting back to the earth. So we're living, we're living separate, basically. We're living separately from the earth, from ourselves, really. And we're, we're, we're putting this bubble, this barrier between us. And that creates so much sickness and stagnancy in the body. And it's Im imperative for us to reconnect, re-earth ourselves, not only for our mitochondrial function, for our cells to be healthy and for us to have energy, but for our own, own well-being as humans, as part of nature, as nature itself. So, what else? Yes, barefoot, barefoot. That is that is key. And what I've noticed is if you're if you're looking to transition from wearing shoes all the time to going to bare feet, obviously, depending on your environment and where you live, there are times of the year when being barefoot is not ideal. We're talking about frostbite here. We're talking about it being very cold and shoes are necessary and some way to insulate your feet is necessary. However, there are times in your life where shoes are not necessary most of the time. And you can start by if you walk in your house with shoes or slippers on, transitioning to just being barefoot inside your house where the environment is ideal for being barefoot all the time. From there, you can start to be barefoot in maybe in a park or where it's grass, where the, the ground is soft and you know that your foot is not going to be cut by glass or any sort of debris on the ground. Going to parks or your backyard if you have one, this is the next step. If you're a runner, transitioning to barefoot shoes and even trying running barefoot on the grass, on if you live near a beach, running on the sand barefoot, places where it's soft and easy for you to run barefoot. That is the first step. And then the second step would be to getting shoes with minimal cushioning or bare, what they call barefoot shoes, which is like a very thin layer between you and the earth. And there are many brands actually that have barefoot shoes. And one that I um, use when I go running or um, when I actually need shoes is Vivo Barefoot. They're a barefoot shoe. I have no affiliation with them, but I do use their products. And yeah, I think it's like three millimeters of, of shoe between you and the earth. So you're still feeling the ground in some aspect. And it's obviously not the same as being barefoot, but it does provide you with a level of, a level of safety from things, potential things that could cut your foot, especially, and I, and I use them mostly for running, where wearing a shoe on uneven ground is necessary. And you can also use these shoes in your workplace as well. Um, but yeah, coming back, there, the importance of being barefoot, I think it's just, it's, it's almost like when you look at society, all of the things that are normal are usually detrimental to our health. And when you start noticing this, you start wondering what else do I need to change in my life to bring about optimal living and optimal health. And I think being barefoot and as much as possible and transitioning to barefoot natural shoes is ideal and imperative for your own 
well-being and your own health. You look at normal, quote-unquote, normal shoes today, and they are very aesthetically pleasing, but they're actually very damaging for the foot. The widest part of the foot is is up here, right? Up in the up in the um, through the through the uh, what's it called? The um, not the toes, the <laughs> far out um, through the. Uh, Um, yeah, through like just below the toes where the knuckles of your your feet are, that is the widest part of the, of the foot. But na normal shoes are narrow and they squeeze your toes together. So if you notice that your big toe is bent inwards and you have this this the bone sort of protruding, that's what's called a bunion, and those develop through wearing normal shoes, through pushing your feet in. And a lot of, you might know people or you might be this yourself where you always can't find a shoe that's wide enough for your foot. That's because normal shoes don't cater to normal feet. They cater to squishing your toes and your feet in to look, for the shoe to look aesthetically pleasing. Like, like wide toe box shoes aren't very attractive to the eye, but they fit your foot as it normally should be. And you look at you look at babies and they have very wide feet through the uh, um, through the, the the sole and up towards the toes before they've been conditioned through wearing normal shoes. And so it's it's like a retransitioning back to your natural foot shape through going barefoot and wearing natural barefoot shoes. And I think this is a key factor in improving your well-being and your your health. And it's like it's like a um a trigger to make you realize what else in my life, what other things that I'm just conditioned to, that are normal, that are perceived as normal, that are actually detrimental to my health? And how can I go in this investigation of finding out what works for me and what is actually not serving me and transitioning back to more of a, a natural human state where we're treating our bodies as they should be? And I think I think this is vital to to cultivating wellness and health within your body is looking at looking at the the just the normal things that you do that are actually not serving you that you're not realizing that they are and yeah f the foot and feet and shoes is a big one so give that some consideration today